Hey, 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 get up and go challenge day 29. Sharon Horner Austin here, and I call this one C Soap. Now, I wish I had a hundred dollar bill because that's a C note, but of course, in my wallet, since I'd never get to the bank anymore during COVID 19, no, no nice, crispy hundred dollar bills. Uh, I still have kids that I like to, to spend money on periodically and granddaughters. I just have crispy one dollar bills. So, C Soap. Of course we're going to go through the framework today in our seventh area our last and final area of course you know that of our life the most important areas of our life as i've learned them and categorized them for decades now is physical mental emotional spiritual financial relationships and contribution now it's no particular order it's you remember we early on in this challenge decided what is the right priority order for you? Because what my priority order is, it isn't this. This is just how I learned it and memorized it and it's stuck in my brain. Uh, it, but that's not my order of priority. I would say physical is my, order, my, is my first order of priority because I've had lots of physical challenges and if I don't pay attention to it and take care of myself, I won't be here to do anything else. And, and secretly, neither will you. So we need to take care of our core level foundational um, levels of being in each of these areas and if we ignore any one area too long what happens it will get our attention something will happen in our experience our life to someone close to us maybe not to us personally but to somebody close to us that has us wake up and pay attention to how we're working on that area in our life have you ever had a friend or a relative get a really difficult challenging uh, health diagnosis a cancer diagnosis or a um, you know, a lupus or some other type of disease diagnosis, and it made you take a deep breath, take, take a quick prayer for them, but realize that, oh my gosh, I have been taking my health for granted. I better pay attention and do something about it. Me during COVID-19, absolutely positively. And that's why I think every time I do this challenge, I talk about the physical aspect of our lives first. And I give an example of that over the the four days of spreading out the SOAP of the SOAP framework. Why? Because it's COVID-19 and the SOAP framework helps me remember on a conscious level when I need to do it on a conscious level, what I'm focusing on, what I'm thinking about, what problem or challenge or change I want to make sure I'm better off after it than when I first experience it. So today we're talking about the area of contribution. Contribution, of course, is defined by you. Contribution is in my opinion, your impact or your interaction with something outside of you, yourself, some other aspect of the world. Me, like a whole lot of other people, I just want to make the world a better place. And you probably do too if you're listening to me. How do you do that though? What and how do you go about making the world a better place? How do you contribute to the world? A lot of times we think it's by donating money, right? Donating resources, having resources because... That's how charitable contributions and organizations have set it up. Nonprofits have set it up that we give them money so that they can fulfill their mission, do what it is that they want to do. Now, absolutely positively can do that. I do that. Most everybody I know contributes money. But in addition to contributing money, you can contribute all sorts of resources, especially and the most valuable resource you can ever contribute is your time. Your time and your energy and your attention is much more valuable than any piece of paper could ever be, right? So don't overlook that when you're thinking about the area of contribution. Contribution is how I'm impacting anything and everything else on the planet outside of myself, right? Now, of course, we can contribute to ourselves, but I think that falls under all of the other areas. So if you if that's the area you want to think about because you're like, okay, I got to take care of myself first. I totally get that. But beyond that, what kind of an impact do you want to have? Um, so I'm going to talk through a couple of examples of the SOAP framework with respect to contribution because I did it for this exercise. And then I did it again this morning, actually, as part of my homework. I did it again and I did it with a more concrete example. So the first time I went through it, I said, okay, what's my current situation? What do I want it to be? And my current situation with respect to COVID is I help people using challenges to get a, and have a better experience during COVID-19. And I'm doing that for free. I'm doing that just to help people share information and knowledge and lessons learned over my 60, 60 years of, of life. And, you know, 47 of that has been in different businesses or industries or corporate America. And so I like to share that information with people, both in the Get Up and Go Challenge, as well as on 
a Facebook group I have for business owners called Super Size Your Business and in a couple of other places as well. So those are ways that I give back to the world around me, to people around me, to try to share some of the stuff that I've screwed up on over my lifetime so that other people don't have to make those same mistakes as well. And what do I want it to be? Well, I overall massive big goal and objective want to help a billion people to realize that they can create and live the life that they want by being themselves. Now, one of the things I've done as part of that to move me toward that is I created our tool today. I've used our tool today and I don't, I'm not sure what I want to call it because there's four different tools I've used, but they all basically say the same thing. They're, they're saying it's like having a mission statement. What is our mission? What is our overall big goal and objective? I call it my, your mantra, your motto, your battle cry, or your code of conduct. What do you stand for? What's important to you? And then who do you want to help with that? So that's, that's part of our guest. Let's talk about our tool today. So battle cry I added recently because my daughter and son-in-law are having a baby girl in February and they have been working on picking out names. And one of the names they picked out for to consider because there's hundreds of them that they've been considering was Valencia. And my son-in-law said, I like Valencia because it sounds like a battle cry. I'm going to round and round with her like Lion King and yell Valencia, Valencia. So that that imagery gave me the idea to say, well, it's not just our motto or our mantra. What is our battle cry for the world? What do we want to spread around the world? And we're, we're willing and we feel so strongly about it that we were willing to yell it from the rooftops, to yell it on the mountaintops, to, to scream it out like Valencia. We're so excited about it. So uh, that's our tool today. So think about that as you're thinking about your S, your story, your situation. What's your current story? What do you want to be? Whenever we're thinking about what we want it to be, we want it to be so exciting and so compelling for us that we are drawn to it, but not only us, other people are drawn to it as well. So what do you stand for? What do I stand for? The O of course is, all right, so help people with challenges, want to positively impact the lives of a billion people. That is a huge gap, right? How do I get from here to there? That's a huge gap. So in the O, I'm gonna, I'm gonna think about what are at least three ways I can start moving toward filling that gap? How can I reach more people? I can ask myself questions. I can use some of the other tools we've talked about. I can brainstorm. I can make lists. I can I can just come up with ideas. Then what action can I take to, to make that happen? I can build a framework and apply it to a specific group of people. One of the things I continually challenge with is niching down and being more specific. And one of the areas and the people that I've wanted to help for a long time because I used to and kind of still belong to that group is people with chronic pain, particularly women with chronic pain and, and disability because we have our own unique set of challenges as does anybody with chronic pain or a, um, a physical impairment to them. So it's a mental impairment, but a lot of times the mental impairment comes from the physical impairment because it all meshes together. So chronic pain, folks with chronic pain. I've had a, a group called painkillers for a while that I for a lot of reasons, did nothing with. It just sat for a while since like 2018. I started that group and I have not really done anything with it for legal reasons and a lot of reasons. But now I'm at in the position where I can, if I so choose, work on that group. So that would come under O. So what are some actions I can take? I can build a framework to apply for, or I could start a, and, and add to that group and, and find a specific group that I can make a positive difference for. And... I guess the P is then how can I automate that? How can I make progress on that moving toward that goal on a, on a regular basis instead of a sporadic basis, which is what I'm kind of doing right now. I kind of get taking the shotgun approach. Which I throw a bunch of stuff out and see what sticks. Not a very angled and concerted effort with respect to that. So what's the other example I went through? Because this one's kind of a, a high pie in the sky global visionary, big as the world type contribution that I want to make long term. So what's a shorter term example of a contribution that I can make? So for my homework today, I ran through the SOAP framework and this time I did it with um, resources, donating not just money, but stuff to various charities like Goodwill, Women's Shelters, um, there's a place in a town near me that has and does and helps um, women and families with the, the funds that they achieve. 
that have been abused or battered. And that's my favorite place to take stuff. So um, with respect to contribution, donate resources, I call this one. And I'm like, okay, well, what's my S? What's my current situation? What's my current story about donating resources? And actually, I started this about a, a little over a year ago. I started maybe longer. I started getting rid of things and donating things that I no longer use. Things that I might need again, but I probably don't. So I set a goal and objective that I would get rid of 90% of my material things as I was divorcing and getting and moving out of my home. So 90% of my stuff had to go. And I, I did that. I went down from a big old house to where I am now in a storage unit. And definitely gave away 90% of what I own. But I wanted to make this a more regular thing, right? So, I, because I still have too much stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm going to admit it. I still have, if you look at my background, you can tell what my life is like, right? Pretty cluttered, pretty full of stuff. So I still have too many material things. So what could I do to go from where I am now? I want to contribute. I want to donate. I want to make a positive difference in the world. And I'm, I'm doing it haphazardly and slowly. And how can I, and I want to do it. On a continuous basis i want to continually be adding value to the world with things right donating things to ex already existing charities and organizations things that already exist instead of creating my own thing like i talked about in the last example create my own big thing donate things that i already have that i'm not they're underutilized or i'm not using them at all to already existing charities and then how can i make that at progressing to that that i do it all the time i have a routine and a regular schedule that i do that at so OR, what are some ways I can get to fill the gap from where I am now haphazardly donating things to making sure I'm donating and, and calling through things and simplifying my life on a regular basis because simplifying my life benefits other people in that I can donate the things that I, I don't need anymore that are complicating my life. Um, and so I brainstorm some options. Once a month, I can find things that I don't use and donate. Um, I can make, let's see this, where's my magnifying glass? Um, I said make it a habit, which is more like take action. So today I'm going to look for something to let go of, to share, to give away. I'm going to look for something and I've actually, I've, I'm actually i actually going to make this a regular habit. I'm going to have a, a donation station in my house now so that every time I find something or come across something or look for something, I can add it to the donation station and then once a month or once a week or however often, whenever the donation station area gets that I've dedicated fills up, then I will automatically get that stuff taken to the charity of my choice, the organization of my choice. But I will always be looking through my things for things that can be simplified, called out, donated, because I'm not using them anymore. Like my whole storage unit, I went there once. I've been there once this fall, right? So in all the COVID time, I've been to my storage unit one time. Prior to that, when I, I filled it up and then I didn't go there at all. So how how much do I need the things that are in there? Some of them have sentimental value. I'll keep those things, but the rest of it should all be given to charity or to people that can use it right now instead of paying to keep it in storage. So I could have that money from storage that I could donate to, to charities and causes that I care about. So that was that's another more concrete example. How, what can I do right now? I can start donating to charity. Now, am I working on the challenge and, and adding to my bigger vision? Absolutely, positively, of course I am. And so I'll do both simultaneously. So our action item today is to share um, one thing that you stand for. So it doesn't have to be a ton. Just one thing that you believe in, one thing that you stand for. And it's not for us to judge or, or, or criticize or critique or anything. It's what is something that's important to you. To me, it's important to help people with chronic pain, chronic illness, chronic disease, to create a better life, create the life they want, not the life they feel they're stuck with because they have pain. That would be something that I feel very, very strongly about. It. My friend Abel, her, her overriding contribution and goal is to help people read more books, to help people learn and grow and have the skills and abilities they need to create the better life for themselves and for those that they love and care about. So share your battle cry or your motto or your mantra in the comments below your and then code of conduct is a longer version of the things that you stand for we'll talk about that another day uh, or another time not not another not today and not during this challenge either because it's a big topic i'm still working on my personal code of conduct uh, but share that uh, if i if i were to share my motto my personal motto and it's been this for about 
10 years is be loving, love being, be you. And I've used that a lot over the last 10 years. And I think that you'll probably see more of that going forward because it is my motto. It is my battle cry. It is my mantra. It is the way I choose to move toward living my life each and every day. And I want other people to do the same. Uh, so mine would be be loving, love being, be you. What is yours? Or what do you stand for? And mine is helping people with chronic pain, helping people that are having challenges, helping people that have somehow felt like they were disadvantaged franchise or disadvantage in some way shape or form to move past that and move on with their life share yours in the comments below and i will be with you tomorrow for day 30 of our 30 plus day get up and go challenge get up go do this have fun with it and i will of course be with you tomorrow